Father in God, we come again this morning. You've been a blessing and you've established us. you blessed us since we met here yesterday and again today. As we start the programs, we pray that we'll be with each and every one of us and you bless us according to thy will and also according to thy word. Father, as we congregate here, may you be a blessing to each and every individual. Even those who are still coming, Father, may you have still their feet so that they will be here in time. And how we pray that we'll be in one accord and in one spirit as we know what is thy will in our days. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Um, the book uh, we'll uh, read this morning, Devotion, is the book of um, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse number 47. Luke chapter 12, number 47, the Bible says, And that servant who knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask them more. Now, we need to understand why Christ was speaking these words. And uh, the issue is... We have been committed with much. So much will be required unto us. I think if there are some there, there are people in this world who have been privileged to study and to learn a lot of things, we are the ones. Even just leave alone the Seventh day Adventists who are in the churches each and every Sabbath. But we as we are, we need to understand what the what what, what the Bible is saying is that we have been committed to study and we have been we, we, we have been given much and why we have known all, all of these things is that if we are not prepared then we are in danger and that's why he says and that servant who knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself as we have been coming here now and then now and then we are planning we are we are we are organizing a lot of things but surely how prepared are we? Because uh, we are at the edge and things are moving very fast. Christ is preparing to finish the work in the heavenly sanctuary. And the Bible says those who knew, but they prepare not themselves. On which side are we? Because even those who never knew, the Bible says they still be punished, but their punishment will be less. Eh? And that's why a few stripes, but upon us who, who have known. And that's why when I look at myself and when I look at the, at the situation, the world is moving. There was something we were watching this morning, and the way the Sunday law is coming on our side, the way things are being passed, the way things are being pushed. How prepared are we? Because now when Christ was speaking these things, he was very sure and particular he was speaking unto us. You know there is a remnant and there is a remnant of the remnant. And I think when Christ was also speaking about the, 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 the second coming, always when he wanted to teach the, 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 the apostles, the disciples about deep things, he had to call them aside. And that's why Christ has always been taking us aside places. We sit, we study, and we learn, and we know what is ahead of us. But the storm is coming, and when the storm comes, how prepared are we? That's what, that's what Christ was, what was meaning. We know, but how prepared are we? And this is what he say: For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask them more. We have the light. 
Again, you can inquire from the book Great Controversy, page 673, and the early writings, page 294-295. We need to understand that you have been committed with a lot, and much has been committed at, and to us as, as, as God's children. And we need to understand and know this message is for us, and also it's for our generation. It is for God's people, and more so those who hear and understand the message. And uh, that's why I want us also to go into the book of um, Genesis. Genesis chapter 13. There is a, there is a story about Abraham there. Verse number 14. Uh, let me go to verse 14 to 18. Chapter 13. It says, But the man of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceeding me. And the Lord you have started said, in verse 13. 13. Let, yeah. And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that, Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it unto thy seed forever. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yeah, to 18. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar to the Lord. Thank you. Now, Abraham, an evangelist. Wherever, Abra whenever, Ab whenever Abraham moved, and wherever he went, he was an evangelist. And that's why the Bible says, and he built an altar to the Lord. You know, the purpose of the work of Abraham as an evangelist, because he was called by God himself, where he went, even if he knew he will not be there forever, but he had to leave an altar for God. And he taught those people the way to worship the true God. And even after he left, he had already left a true faith there. And that's the purpose of each and every one of us. If that's not the mission, if that's not the message of the third angel, then you have no other message. There is no need for us to call ourselves Seventh-day Adventists. And that's why we are standing at the end of the ages. And also, remember Abraham himself was also a man who had come from the city and God had directed him to the country. When Abraham was leaving the land of uh, Babylon, Mesopotamia, you know, Babylon was surrounded by two rivers. There was river Tigris this side and river Euphrates this side. And when God called him from, ba from Babylon and he told people, I'm leaving. And they asked him, where are, you, where are you going? And he told them, I don't know where I am going. God has just told me to leave. They asked Abraham, are you mad? You know Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was a gold digger. He was a, he, he was a man who, who um, he was a miner. He used to mine gold in Babylon. So he was among the richest men in Babylon. But God had to call him from Babylon to another land which he himself never knew. So when they knew Abraham was leaving, and they knew Abraham will not pass this river Euphrates, all the people of Babylon came out to look at him. Abraham and to see not now Abraham Abraham crossing the other side but they came to see Abraham drowning in that river Euphrates and that's when they saw Abraham that's why the name the first name the first name in chapter 14 verse 13 that's where now we find the name Hebrew Abraham was the first Hebrew because the Bible says and there came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew for he dwelt by the ox of Mamre, the Amorite brother of Eskol, and brother of Anel, and these were allies with Abraham. You see, that's where now they saw Abraham crossing the other side. Until they, they thought now, they were thinking now Abraham will perish. He will drown in this river. But Abraham, by faith, he moved, not knowing where he went. 
Sometimes you can wait for God to speak unto us while we are still there waiting. God, you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? But friends, one thing I, I know, that God will not guide and will not lead you if you want to know the destination of where you are going. That's not the God whom we serve. The God whom we serve always tells us, move. And when we move by faith, when we move according to his will, he might not show us the same, same moment because the problem is that we want to be told where we are going. We want to know the destination when you have not even taken the first step to the place. And that's why we are in danger. That's why Jesus was, was, was uttered those words. Not unto the whole world. Not unto the seven day Adventist as a child, but unto us. We need to go down to our knees and ask God which way forward. We are talking with Sister Edith and Sister Florence this morning as you are looking at one of the video here. And let me tell you, friends, we are, we are far than the way we think we are. Where we think we are. We need to learn. Abraham, as an evangelist, the purpose and the mission of each and every missionary is to be an evangelist. I was looking at something from the pen of inspiration. You know, many people, and most of the Seventh-day Adventist Church members, we have a lot of money. We have, we have invested, 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 invested. And that's why the problem now comes in. What will that money help us in the time of trouble if it will not work for God? And that's why we need to understand if God has given this, us this precious message, is, the, is it just a message to know and understand that we know much than the rest? You know there is a division which is coming in the church. Right now it has already started. There must be two groups. A group of people who believes what they believe in and a group of people who believes what God has said. And if it is God, we need to understand it is just like Abraham. We need to live by faith. We need to move by faith and we move forward because it is God who is telling us move. It doesn't matter where you are going because the crisis. But when the crisis comes and we know there is a crisis, you know it's just like standing and saying, I know you know that some, and you know tomorrow something will be done and you have never taken any move. That's where we are. God is speaking to us. God is helping us to understand what we need to do. And that's why Christ was very particular. That the more the message, the, the message you have, the bigger the responsibility. The greater the responsibility, the greater the wound. Because it is upon us to make a decision. Are we for God or are we for the Lord? It is not about knowledge. We need to understand it is not about knowledge. It is about what steps will you take when you have known that thing. What is, what is happening. And that's why God is calling each and every individual. Abraham himself, well, like the story of Abraham. Even though he was not, he didn't follow God wholeheartedly until the time when he came into that Mount Moria. That's when he realized and understood God. But blindly as he was following God, he knew and he was following God. And that's why when he started his journey, the Bible says very clearly, there were three conditions which God had given Abraham. The first condition, in, in, the, in the same book, chapter 12, verse 1, the first condition Abraham was to get out of his country, the second one out of his kindred, the third one out of his father's house. Those are the conditions we need to understand. You know, we are Abraham. If Abraham would have just followed the conditions and the guidance of God from the word go, he would have never delayed. And the mistakes he did while on, on his journey, those mistakes will have not been there. And that's why the first time when he left, 
He left his country. He never lived. He never left. He, ne- he, ne- he, ne- he never left behind his kindred, and that's why he went with his father. And that's why Terah and the entire family followed him. And when they were following him, whom were they still worshiping? You know, Terah was the high priest of the gods of Egypt, uh, of Babylon. And that's why in the book, let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 23. Verse number 2. So 24, sorry, not 23, 24, verse number 2 and number 3. It says, Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time. Even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacho, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. Thank you. You know, Abraham, when he left, his, you know, God wanted to separate Abraham with his family. And that's why those conditions, those three conditions, were must for him to reach where he was going. But he left with his father, Terah. And you know, if he, had, he left with his father, Terah, what kind of worship? Sun worship. worship. And that's the problem. We are still clinging to our families. God cannot guide us into the promised land. And that's why Abraham, when he left, God had already told him. He had given him conditions. Those three conditions were a must for him to get into the land. You leave your country, you leave your kindred, and your father's house. And when Abraham did not fulfill, that's why he, after he left with his father, it took for 15 good years before God again came and to, came to communicate with him. God kept silent because it was not God who was guiding Abraham, but it was who? It was Terah. They were not worshipping God again. They were still worshipping the gods of Babylon because the father was a high priest. And the Bible said when Terah died, When Terah died, that's when God called again Abraham and he told him, arise after 14 good years. 15 good years, sorry. The 15 good years, God kept silent because Abraham was not listening to the voice of God. Again, as they move, they move, they move. Again, he he marries another woman. Again, God keeps quiet for another 14 years. Delaying, delaying. The devil is delaying us here and there, here and there, here and there, until we will not get into that promised land. The promise is there, and the promise has been there. It is only just by faith. Sometimes you ask God, where do you want me to go? We need to move by faith. We need to ask God, where are we going? Where shall I be? In the near future, by the, as the time goes by, what shall we do? Because God is speaking to individuals. God is speaking to his people. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to me. He's not speaking to the entire church. But whenever we are, and whatever we do, one thing is sure. We are missionaries and we are evangelists. <coughs> if that was not the purpose of Abraham, God would have not, not have called him. Even as he tarried where he was going, still he was there is truly a living God in heaven. A God we are supposed to be worshipped. A God who is always working with his people and always wants good for his people. Because if we don't do that, even where we work, I remember there was a lady at an SSF. And that lady one time I visited her. And uh, she, the, the office which I, I had gone, she came and so, as you are as, as, as you are talking, she said, you know, I got a house girl. And uh, that house girl tried to preach unto me and I refused. And I told her, Staki kuskia mambo ya Yesu wapa. And this is what the girl told her. Mama, sita wai kuambia tena juu ya Yesu. Lakini kuna kitu moja nita kuambia. Nita kuubiria tu. Hati nekati nita ku 
unaona kwa dirisha ninataka ikuwe na kuhubiria Yesu ile kikombe ya maji ninakuletea itakuwa na kuhubiria juu ya Yesu that lady she was the one who was giving that testimony after a long run after stay with that girl she believed there is a god in her amen even through her child has through that child ambaye alikuwa naye kwa nyumba yake the way that child started behaving that woman truly she could stand and give a testimony na kaniambia mimi i know there is a god that girl house girl preach to me you know that yet that's the purpose and that's what god called abraham for even where you work where you live what uh, where wherever you are you need to understand it is only for one purpose to tell people about god you know we have come to a time where even people cannot differentiate between a christian and a heathen we are all the same but god is looking for people who have who are totally different from the from the rest even when the people comes and ask you are you still are you are you uh, do you go in the same same church with so and so but yes then how comes you know that's also a testimony that's a testimony and that's why god is looking for people just like abraham to be evangelists and to be missionaries and i pray always that god is speaking to people and i know that i'm i'm 100% sure but if you read your his voice if you listen to him and you will follow him by faith god will guide us somewhere and he will lead us somewhere until we reach the destination but the problem is there are sometimes we reach somewhere and we think we have reached but we are in the we have not we are very far do you remember that man whom jesus say, jesus told that you are you are almost in the kingdom but was he in the kingdom no. he was almost and what does it mean almost if the door of probation would have been closed while he's still outside would he have said i was almost in the no the door is already no. done what yes. so many of us we are almost but we are not there and that's the problem when you are almost it says we have not yet reached we are not yet inside but we are still outside and if we are still outside we are doomed to get lost forever that's why it is upon us to ask god which way forward because god is there, the only one who will guide and will speak to us let us shun many many voices which are speaking beside in the in, behind and in front of us the only voice we need to understand that to listen is the voice of god of heaven and if we listen to that voice of heaven god will guide us unto the end and that's why it is by faith it's only by faith and that faith will lead us somewhere that faith will take us far it will take us places because it is god who has called us may god bless us Amen. Amen.